I'm lost in the woods and I can't connect to the internet. Goodbye, cruel world. If you believe tech companies like SpaceX and Google, problems like this will soon be a thing of the past. They have plans to connect our entire planet. Even the most remote areas sounds good. But how is that supposed to work? Do we really need that? And what could be the problems? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four. When talking about global internet access, we see that there are big differences from country to country. While 96% of South Koreans are regularly online, only 5% of the people in the Central African Republic use the internet. That doesn't sound very fair. But getting our whole planet wired with cables is far too complicated and too expensive. There could be a solution though. Wireless internet from up there. Wireless internet basically works like this. A high cell tower with a wide reach sends a signal to some lower towers with a smaller reach. And cell phones connect to these lower range towers. So far, so good. But the further away we are from the towers, the worse the connection gets. And if only a few people live in a remote area, it's not very likely that a telecommunication company will invest money in the infrastructure there. So companies like SpaceX and Google say, why not get higher up? to expand the radius. Their strategies are different. SpaceX wants to connect the world with their Starlink project. That's basically a system of small satellites. They weigh about 200 kilograms. SpaceX rockets are supposed to bring them into orbit at an altitude of 340 to 1150 kilometers. Once activated, the satellites receive a signal from ground stations. They send it back to Earth with a much wider range than would be possible from the ground. But they also connect to one another that makes the system more stable and guarantees faster transmission rates. The first satellites are already up there. SpaceX installed 60 of them in May 2019. They're supposed to cover areas in the US. To bring the service to the whole planet, Starlink would need about 12,000 satellites. Estimated costs, 10 billion US dollars. Alphabet, Google's parent company, isn't aiming that high, literally. For their project Loon, they're developing a system of balloons. Hence the name Loon. The balloons carry transmitters into the stratosphere, which then connect to each other, at an altitude of about 18 kilometers. The system works similarly to SpaceX, but at a much lower cost. The balloons have a big disadvantage. They're still rather fragile and function for about 200 days only. After that time, they navigate back to places where Google workers can pick them up. The Starlink system will be built to last. Another problem. In the stratosphere, the balloons are subjected to winds. But because it's Google, they take the disadvantage and turn it into an advantage. By analyzing vast amounts of weather data, they want to make use of the winds to navigate their balloons to the areas where they need it. And Project Loon has a huge overall advantage. It can establish connectivity pretty quickly. After Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in 2017, hundreds of thousands of people were cut off from the internet. Within a very short time, Google set up a balloon network that was, among other things, crucial for coordinating the efforts of relief organizations. The answer is yes, at least in areas that are populated but remote. A lot of social interaction isn't possible without the internet. And apart from that, it's absolutely crucial when it comes to running a business. Chains of supply, transaction, customer care, it's all done online. So if we don't want parts of our world to be completely cut off and never be able to get a chance to thrive, we should support any development in that field. Wireless connections might not be as fast as cable networks at the moment, but they could at least cover the basic demands of private people and businesses. Some people say access to the internet should be a basic human right. And that's indeed a wonderful idea. If you use it wisely, it can help you educate yourself and you stay connected to people that matter to you. But private investors like Google and SpaceX are driven by commercial imperatives rather than a sense of responsibility towards society. You might say, no problem, the market will handle that. But we can already see what it could lead to when a big tech company also provides internet access. Facebook started its project internet.org in 2013. It's supposed to provide free internet services to customers in developing countries. To make that possible, Facebook cooperates with local telecommunication companies and smartphone manufacturers. They offer the service as part of their packages. 
The project runs in 63 developing nations. Via the app Free Basics, users are granted a very limited access to the Internet, with Facebook services at the core. Sounds like a fair deal, as long as it's free. Not really. Critics say it's a blatant strategy to extend Facebook's dominance to the developing world. It's also been accused of violating net neutrality by strictly controlling participating sites in order to eliminate Facebook's competitors. So what would happen if one big tech company became the worldwide dominator in the field of connectivity supply? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you've got a digital topic you'd like us to cover, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.